Okay, so uh, welcome to this video, which will be the, the first one of a series where I will be uh, making my uh, very own wooden chess set, including the chess board and all the pieces. Uh, first thing first, just want to, uh, to say that uh, I will be doing all the, all the talking in English, of course, because this is the language that most people understand on YouTube, but just want to say that it's not my primary language, so I'm just just want to apologize in advance for all the English mistakes that I could and will probably make down the road. So uh, I'm French Canadian, if you are wondering. So, but normally my English is not too bad, so it should be a big concern. Anyway, uh, one more one more thing I want to say up front is that uh, I'm no nothing close to a professional woodworker. I'm just, uh, just some guy who likes to to, to make stuff in, in his basement. So. I do this uh, at night. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a software developer for a living, so uh, it's really far away from <laughs> working with wood. So, uh, but just keep that in mind while while watching that uh, I would probably do a lot of stuff wrong, but I will try to to learn. Feel free to comment if you want, and if you want to to give me some tips, they are of course welcome. Uh, and by the way. Thank you to th thanks to all the people who are posting videos online about making uh, chess sets and uh, out of wood. Uh, I watch a lot of them, and uh, a lot of them are really good. Uh, especially a special thanks to a guy named James Wagner. I hope uh, I say the name correctly. Uh, your videos are just awesome. Uh, you've been posting posting them lately lately, and I I've seen all of them. They're just really good and you are certainly uh, one of those the guys who, who really inspired me to to to, uh, to, uh, to put this project together so let's uh, let's move on to this next part of this little introduction which will be about uh, talking about the tools the main tools that I will be using for for this project okay so the main tool that I will be using obviously is going to be uh, this uh, this word turning device the, this slate that uh, is used to rotate pieces of wood so uh, so we can work on them so uh, I got this little unit here uh, I purchased it uh, a few weeks ago uh, it was on sale for about uh, 129 dollars Canadian dollars so it was pretty cheap uh, this is a uh, the brand is it's called Mastercraft it's a it's a Canadian store here it's called Canadian Tire uh, they sell you know, a lot of a lot of tools, including the, this little lathe. Uh, it's nothing fancy; it's not a big one or anything, but it, it works pretty good. Uh, it, the engine is not is not really uh, really strong. I think it's one third of an HP, but it, it, it's more than than enough for a little project. I think it, it can handle pieces of wood with char uh, a, a foot long. And uh, I think it can turn stuff uh, with eight inches uh, diameter. So, but for now, for my uh, chess pieces, it won't be anything close to this uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of the dimensions. So, uh, one thing that I like a lot about this little tool is that uh, it's got electronic speed control uh, instead of. Uh, uh, you know, changing bells and fillets where you just have to turn this knob here to to reduce the speed or to increase the speed of the turning. So if I just make it going here, you can see that you can at least hear that it can go a lot faster and a lot slower just by turning this little knob here. Uh, so this is a really cool feature. So other than that, it's a pretty standard late. So uh, so that's it. This is what I'll be using. Uh, other than that, I uh, I ordered this uh, this device here, which is called a scroll chuck, which is used to uh, you know just uh, hold your pieces uh, on the lathe. You just, you just by screwing this thing. I, I don't know if you can see correctly, but anyway, it just uh, you know it just tightens with the jaws here, so it can hold stuff. Uh, it screws right here uh, in place of the, the face plate. Uh, you can just screw this scroll chuck here and uh, can be used to, uh, you know, hold round pieces of wood just like that. So, I'll just show you. Uh, I won't tighten it or anything, but just to show you the principle, just 
with the wood here and tighten it here so you can uh, rotate the wood without having to hold it on the other way because uh, standard spindle work usually just uses a uh, little, little device like that to just hold the, the wood by, the, by both sides. So uh, like this device you can hold it just on one side and work the piece all the way around including the, this, this very hand. So, but this little chuck, uh, again, it's not any expensive one, it's just basic scroll chuck, but it does a great job. Uh, other than that, I did order uh, this little tail arbor. It just goes into the tail stock here, and uh, in which I, I was able to, to screw this, uh, this drill chuck that I had from an old drill. So this will allow me to use let's say the fortunate bit just like that and put it here so I can drill holes in the dead center of the piece of wood that's going to be turning so I would get, I'm going to use this thing to uh, drill holes in the bottom of my pieces because I, I plan on having holes in the bottom of all every pieces so I can put some uh, some weight there so uh, I'll show you that down the road and uh, I haven't decided yet uh, of what is going to be the weight on my pieces, but uh, I'll see uh, w w when I get moving. So, uh, other than that, I've got this um, little box here, which is just a, 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 a little box which contains four, four types, four grids of, of sandpaper. Uh, you can really see here, I, I don't know what to put that so, so the camera does it, but anyway, it's got 150, 240, 330, 320, and 400 grit and it's just it's little bands of, of sand, uh, sandpaper which are uh, made for tur wood turning because you just get a little band here and you can you know have one here you can just use this to to, to sand you, your piece while, while working on it. Uh, other than that uh, standard digital caliper uh, which is going to be useful to um, to get the dimensions right to, uh, to compare dimensions to one from one piece to another and to measure some some parts of my pieces uh, standard caliper here uh, just one cool fact about this caliper it was uh, it was owned previously by my grandfather so uh, I just you know uh, buffed it a little bit and cleaned it and uh, it's now all re ready to use again so this this caliper must be at least 50 years old so definitely going to be the the oldest tool that I'm going to be using and uh, lastly uh, the, the light itself did come with a with a few chisels a few small chisels like that uh, which were basic chisels but still I, I did uh, a few little jobs with those and they, they were working fine but I did order uh, a set of uh, full scale chisels uh, with long handles and just like that so uh, I have a six uh, a set which included six cheeses like that I have the skew one the, the parting tool uh, a roughing gouge just like that and uh, a 3 8 uh, spindle gouge which will be the, the main tools that I will be using uh, and those are made of uh, high speed steel so uh, they should uh, keep their be sharp uh, longer before having to, to sharpen them again and uh, the, the kit came also with this uh, this ball gouge and this uh, this round scraper but uh, for this project I, I won't be using those so they will just stay in the box and uh, so I will be using those chisels and maybe uh, at some point this one too because this little chisels has a as you can see, little pointy tip. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, just put it in front of me like that. Anyway, uh, and this one proved to be really useful when I was working on some prototypes. So I may uh, use this one uh, from time to time. So I think that sums up all the main tools that I'll be using. Uh, Okay, now uh, now for the wood that I will be using to make uh, the chess pieces and the chess board. Uh, I first uh, researched uh, which type of wood is usually 
uh, used for for making chess pieces and uh, uh, I quickly set my mind on two different uh, type of woods for for, for, for the, the darker one uh, it was quite easy because uh, I, actually it was just a, a personal choice I always wanted uh, I always liked the uh, chess made of uh, rosewood so uh, I, I quickly decided that I, I would like to make uh, my set out of rosewood uh, the problem is uh, in this my part of the world, which is uh, here in Canada. Actually, it's, uh, I think it's the same situation for all, uh, all North America, which includes USA. Rosewood is not uh, really easy to find. Uh, it, it, it is possible to to buy some uh, in uh, in specialty shops where they sell all types of uh, exotic wood but uh, it's usually really expensive or in really small quantities so but uh, I found some online actually I bought this rosewood for out of eBay uh, it uh, it came uh, in this kind of stuff stuff it's a uh, it's two by two and it's uh, two feet long so uh, which was perfect for my project because uh, two by two is exactly the, the kind of stuck wood that I I would want to use for turning my pieces. I would want to, of course, make this round. Uh, I made a few already. It will come come out like, just like that. So uh, with this uh, this stock square wood, I will just round it like that, and then uh, cut it to land to uh, land to make uh, my pieces. So uh, I bought, I think, it was seven of those, two feet long, which uh, was. Uh, enough to make my all my pieces the the, the 16 dark pieces uh, as well as the chessboard because uh, like I said I will be making chessboard too uh, so here it is and for the lighter the lighter wood uh, of course there there's a lot more choices but uh, I wanted something uh, that, that is easy to find for this one to maybe to compensate for the rose, rosewood so uh, Around here, it's uh, it's pretty easy to find maple, and uh, I did purchase some some maple, some piece of maple like that. Uh, it was a little, little longer when I bought it. It was I think it was six feet long. Uh, it is a it is a rough piece. It's just you know the the surface is not uh, is not nice. It's it's smooth. It's just rough, and uh, I think they call it eight. Four or something like that instead of two inch. I don't know why. I, I don't, I'm not used to this kind of um, of naming uh, for wood. But anyway, so this was the the wood that uh, I chose, and uh, I will just cut this one to length and uh, uh, and make you know. Let me show you. Uh, out of this piece, I will make stuff pretty similar to to the rosewood actually, two by two and uh, cut it to different lengths. So uh, so that's it for the wood. Okay, so I think that's about it for, for this introduction video uh, of the series. Last thing I wanted to, uh, to talk about was uh, the, the design for the pieces themselves. Uh, uh, I looked it up online and uh, I found a lot of uh, a lot of stuff actually. Uh, first, I came around this uh, th this type of, of image out of Google Images, which is just uh, you know standard. Uh, they're called Staunton pieces, which is the the usual chess pieces that you will see. So I will uh, try uh, to reproduce some th this type of, of pieces. Uh, this was just an example that uh, I had uh, lying around. And uh, I came uh, across this uh, this particular thing, which is a just an image. Uh, I think it was in 2010 that the the official uh, chess federation decided to redesign its own chess set. Uh, I think it's the, it's the international international federation. Maybe it's the it was the American federation. Anyway, they they redesigned their chess set and. Uh, I found the, the news about this stuff, which uh, even though it was almost five years old, but and uh, they they just published the uh, the all dimensions of their pieces. So uh, and I I pretty much like the design of those pieces, 
and uh, and I have I know you can't really read right now, but I have all the dimensions, the, which is uh, the height and the width of, of each piece, and uh, it gave an, a nice idea of uh, the proportions for each pieces. So uh, this is mostly the 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 thing that I will try to follow to make uh, to make my pieces. So that's it. This uh, this introduction video is done. And uh, next up, I will be uh, putting on a video about uh, making my chessboard. Uh, it will be the next video. Uh, from the time I decided to, to make the chessboard, uh, I wasn't sure yet if I would record videos of all this stuff. So, uh, unfortunately, I won't have a uh, live, live video of me actually making the chessboards. Uh, so, uh, Actually, it's already done. It's uh, it's right here. I will show you in the next video. The board is already done, uh, but I will try to make a video to to just explain different steps that uh, I took to 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 make the board. So just to give you an idea of how to make this and to show you uh, to show you mine uh, out of maple and rosewood. So uh, see you next in my my next video. Bye.